On July 29th in Southport, UK, a young man went into a Taylor Swift dance event and tried to take the life of 11 children and two adults. Three of those children have now sadly passed away. After police investigations, the man was arrested, but authorities did not disclose his identity as he was a 17-year-old minor. The police did, however, release the information that the culprit was born in the UK and that his parents moved to UK from Rwanda. The following day, thousands of people gathered in town to mourn the tragedy, and some became outraged, coming to the natural conclusion that the culprit must have been a Muslim. A violent riot followed, in which a mosque in Southport was viciously attacked. Cars were set on fire. Many were injured, and chaos broke loose in town. With the situation escalating, the police disclosed the information that the 17-year-old Axel Ruda Kubana was not a Muslim at all. Rather, he was a local, a church-going Christian from a Christian family. Some of the people from the local community, when they realized what has happened, they got together to clean up the debris. Now, the question that rises here is: Why did this happen? Why did people come to the natural conclusion that the culprit was a Muslim? Do two wrongs make a right? Why did people feel justified to attack a mosque? While, as a matter of fact, Rwanda. Is a Christian majority country. Ninety-two percent of the population are Christians. Actually, it is not the fault of the people. For years, they have been hammered with anti-Islam, anti-Muslim, false information, and false propaganda. Xenophobia and anti-Islam mentality, built by media, with time has led to this event. They were made to believe. That whatever evil happens in the world happens because of Islam and Muslims. So when this event occurred, they naturally believed a Muslim was responsible, and justified their retaliation against the Muslim community and attacked the mosque in Southport. Whereas murder is a major sin according to Islam. According to Islam. If a Muslim chooses to reside in a foreign land, he must abide by the rules of the foreign land. Hence, any Muslim would be a law-abiding citizen if he is a practitioner of Islam. Then, what is the reason behind all the propaganda against Islam and Muslims? Can the reason be that some politicians want the invasion of a Muslim-majority foreign land for economic gain? And to control over a region, and to justify the atrocities that they would commit in that land, the murder, the destruction, and the seizing of land, they must first demonize the Muslims to their own people, because without their people's support, manpower, and tax dollars, it can't be done. And religions are used to manipulate people and support these wars. Religions that rivals Islam, either so-called fake religious people who do anything for money, or religious people who have gone so much extreme in their faith that to defend their religion against Islam, they would lie about Islam and Muslims to win their religious competition and confirm the extreme beliefs of their followers. Who are they? Are they really religious people? Do they really believe in God, or are they serving Satan? And those who, on false pretense, vilify innocent people to their own country's civilians, so that they can invade foreign land, take life, and seize control of those land. Who are they? Are they even human, or demon, in the form of human? Like, share, and subscribe to Truth Shall Prevail.